I'm going to start now with uh, some housekeeping. Uh, basically, if you have a question, put it in the question box. You guys are muted, but we want to hear from you, so make sure you ask questions. Um, I, I'm very excited about this, quite frankly, because when I was reviewing the content two weeks ago, this was the course I was going to give at um, uh, Neocon, and then they called off Neocon with all this stuff, uh, you know, going on with the virus. And I reviewed the content a couple of weeks ago, and I realized it's I got to change it. I got to change it because of what we're all going through. So I did, and I submitted it to the NKBA, the AIA, the IDCEC. And I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, I, I was shocked that they approved it so fast. These things take a while for them to go over, but I got approval in no time. So I want to, again, welcome you. This is Jim Nowakowski, Making More Sense of Social Media in a special COVID-19 edition. Two sponsors today, KB Resource, we'll hear about them after the presentation and accountability information management. Once you be aware of these two sponsors, they're, they're uh, excellent sources for you to help you battle this, uh, this condition. So let's get the show on the road. This presentation is co our copyright. However, I do share slides with you. If you're interested, it is in fact being recorded. Uh, we may post it later. It's approved by all those wonderful organizations you see in front of you. The AIA approved it in record time. When we submitted it uh, a week ago today, they approved it within one day, which is uh, record time. The IDCEC took a little longer, but again, record time because of Easter. Uh, we got that approval, as a matter of fact, this morning, and NKBA approved it in also record time. The social media world has of course generated a lot of interest and you want to navigate your business and by the way this is about business this is not about what you're doing in your in your sheltering in place and at home this is not that although we'll touch on that this is about business because the, the reason i had to do this and you're going to hear pre-covid and post-covid is because what what the virus and the reaction to the virus has done is really stopped business and that's the that's the difficulty we all face today, and we're going to talk about that. That's why the content has been revised. So that we want to clarify the platforms you're using and which are applicable to business. But most of all, what has changed because of COVID-19? Be, because more importantly, these social media channels are still going to be here in the future. They're going to be here even more. But which channels you use and how you use them has changed forever. What we want to learn is what I teach in this course is definitions. Aristotle said to find your terms and we're gonna define what social media really means. And then we're gonna introduce you into some sites for business and what they did. Now, pre-COVID, when I used to teach this course, I targeted a hospital and I, I taught the attendees in, my, in this course. And this is one of my most popular courses, how to penetrate and pitch a hospital. I chose a hospital in, in Naperville, Illinois, uh, which we'll talk about and how to, how to penetrate that, how to create a pitch, how to use social media for listening, and then how to prepare your pitch to get an appointment to sell your services. Now, in the audience today, I don't just have designers and architects and showroom consultants and manufacturers. I have people from all, from all walks of life, business life, frankly, because business has stopped. I, I even, I'm, I'm honored to have wounded warriors in the audience. Now, you're going to ask, well, Jim, why would wounded warriors be in the audience? You have to ask them, but I can guess it's because people stop donating. People stop, there's no money. There's no business. We're going to change that. We're going to look at real life examples of social media today. And I want to show you most importantly how to develop a plan. And that starts with your audience, ladies and gentlemen. It always did. Those things didn't change because of the virus. What did change is it's, we got to get people off the off the off the dime here, right? We got to force the issue. We got to stop talking about hand washing. Forget about that. We all know we got to wash our hands, right? I like to start with a story. This is a story I told before the virus. It's still true today. Social media gives the ability to touch anyone and be touched. So we were at Jersey Boys in Vegas before the virus. Great performance. Travis Crowe, the guy on the second from the left over there, is the guy who played Frankie Valley, you know, and, 
at that at that performance, it was just tremendous. And we never got to meet him or anything like that, even though I was clapping my hands saying, encore, encore. Next day, we're shopping in Vegas, and I decide to hop on Twitter and find out, you know, can I talk to this guy on Twitter? I found his account. I tweeted him. My wife and I were in the audience. We enjoyed your performance, Travis. Great show. Really, really, really enjoyed it. One on an encore, but no one else no one else would have fought with me. They wanted to get back to the tables. Within two minutes, ladies and gentlemen, Travis Cole was actually talking back to me. He said, thanks for being in the audience, Jim. Really appreciate it. Within another minute, his manager weighed in and said, thanks for attending. We really, you know, we really like your attendance. Spread the word. You know, Travis does a great job. Within another two minutes, the the Travis Cole fan club from Arizona weighed in and said, yay, Jim, yay, Jim. So for five minutes, we had a little trap tra- chat between Travis, his fan club, and the manager. How do you do that without social media? How do you do that without social media? How do you do that without social media? I repeated it three times. And then the virus hit. Well, guess what? You still can do that. You just can't do it you know, after a live performance because they've closed everything down. That doesn't mean the social media channels have closed down. It doesn't mean you have to close down. That's the point, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, this is what I tweeted out just the other day. After wiping down my desk with Lysol this morning at the office, yes, we still go in shifts, but we're maintaining the right distance, blah, blah, blah. I thought, you smell that? You smell that? It smells like victory. I had 391 views of that post in LinkedIn and Twitter. From, from not just my network, other people liked it. I don't know if you recognize the movie, That's Apocalypse Now, with Robert DeVell on the beach. You smell that? He's talking about napalm. You smell that? You smell that? That smells like victory. I don't play the whole clip. If you get a chance, look at the whole clip. Because one of the things he says, it's a great movie, one of the things he says on that beach after he's saying, you know, he loves the smell of napalm in the morning, blah, blah, blah. He's standing there in his bare chest while bombs are going off all around him. After he says that, there's silence for a moment except for the bombs. And he whispers, someday this war is going to end. Ladies and gentlemen, someday this virus is going to end. In fact, if you're looking at the news now, and try not to do it too much, you're finding out that, that actually the models are wrong. They're wrong. You're going to find out things in the future, I guarantee you, that are going to shock you that closing down the United States of America and hurting your business like it's been doing is absolutely the wrong thing to do. But they did it, so let's deal with it. Can we deal with it? Socrates was a lot smarter than me, and he said the beginning of all wisdom is to define the terms. So what do we mean by social media, and how is this virus going to change the definition? Well, if you have a good definition, things like viruses don't, don't affect the definition. The definition is the definition. Social media means a form of electronic communication through which users create online communities to share information, ideas. Per- That's great. But you know what? I'm an English teacher. And the way I look at social media is an adjective modifying media. Social is modifying media. What is media? Media is television, radio, uh, cable, cable channels, uh, your phone. Is a, is a media, right? Your your iPhone or your Android is a media. I'm about to show you something that will absolutely help you understand what we're going through in a moment. So what we want to do before I show you this important chart is understand that social media, right? Media is anything we're using to get across and get to people. Ladies and gentlemen, it's snowing outside. I can't believe it. It's I'm looking out my window while I'm presenting to you. I'm sorry. I digress. <laughs> Social is relating to society and organization of mass communication, right? It's not just Facebook. It's not just Twitter. It's not just TikTok. It's not, it's not, it's not. You're, I'm going to say something very, very controversial now. Your website is a social media channel. In fact, your website is the most important social media channel you have. This is the chart I was talking about. I want you to pay strict attention to this chart. This chart is from McKinsey, and it shows you how long it takes to reach 50 million people. 
I want you to think about this. If you look on the bottom, the radio took 38 years. Think about this. 38 years to reach 50 million people. Why is that? If you watch that great thing on PBS about, you know, country music, you'll know why. Because people didn't have radios. You have to buy a radio to get on the radio channel, right? It took 38 years. Respectfully, if this virus hit in 1918 like the Spanish flu did, no one would know about it. You wouldn't know about it like you're doing now. You would not be reacting to it because what you see here is television took only 13 years. The internet took three years and Twitter took less than a year to reach 50 million people. And you know the statistics. You know that on social media like Facebook, I could reach a billion people, blah, 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 right? Well, guess what? What that does is it creates noise. It creates information and we're drowning in information. We, you know, how many times do you have to know you have to stay six feet away? And then someone else down the road tells you, guess what? It takes 10 minutes before you get infected. Do I believe that? Should you believe that? You, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do business, you have to change the conversation. You have to get off this hand-washing stuff and change the conversation. You can't be talking about this virus. You have to focus on what you do. We're going to talk about this. For example, Everything today changes so fast. They talk about a new cycle. They talk about your business cycle. I'm going to share some examples with you. So there you have it. Avoid close contact, blah, 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 right? Well, many, many years ago, ladies and gentlemen, when there was an oral tradition, people didn't have iPhones. They didn't have television or radios. They talked to each other. So if we were in the, in the centuries of oral tradition, we would not even know about this virus. Print, radio, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when the virus struck, the world knew about it. The world reacted to it. And what they did is they made decisions, ladies and gentlemen, based on what they believe they know to be true. When you run your business, you base your decision on what you believe to know to be true, right? You have clients, you have customers, and everything is going on. And then, wham, something happens to disrupt it. Well, what about 9-11, Jim? What about the crash, the depression of 08? Absolutely. Those are, bam, those are things that disrupt. But nothing has disrupted like this, where they forced people, they made executive orders to force people to stop doing business. Okay? And we, as business people, believe that. You can't believe that. You have to do business, otherwise you're out of business. The lifeblood of your business, the blood of your business is revenue. Who's generating revenue these days? Somebody is. I know Honeywell's making a lot of masks. They just got a government contract yesterday. Well, Jim, I don't make masks. No, you don't. You do services, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Because we should know that we have to have a strategy. And our strategy now is while everybody's doing this and doing that and talking about washing we have to figure out what's going to happen when this virus ends. Where are you going to be? And if you stop marketing now, if you stop doing what you're doing before the virus now, you're going to be out of business. You will clearly be out of business. And you have to try everything. You can't just be a victim. You've got to, you've got to disrupt these things. The business guidelines. Here's some business guidelines. I took what the government is telling you to do, which is, there it is, right? Practice good hygiene, wash your hands. And I'm going to give you some business guidelines. You got to work from home. Okay, that's a limitation. What does that mean? That means you can't go out? No, you can go out. We come to work every day. I had a meeting with my 15 people, and I said, what do you want to do? You know, we're an essential business, in my opinion. Your, your jobs are essential. They all voted. I got a great crew. They all voted to come to work. They all want it to come. They want to come to work. If they're sick, they stay home. Absolutely, of course. Please don't infect me, right? And you want to protect the others. Well, the government says I can't have, you know, I can't have more than 10 people. Ladies and gentlemen, I got over 200 people in my audience today. Thank you so much for coming. Can you imagine that? Well, yeah, you can't do it physically, but listen, we're here together right now, right? Do virtual breakfast. Avoid travel. Jim, the showroom shut down. My representative can't see me. 
I can't see him. Well, figure it out, right? Figure out how to visit the facility safely. You can visit safely. You can do it online. You can do a drive-by, park cars, what, 10 feet away? And most of all, practice good business hygiene. Touch prospects. Touch them. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to touch them. And you got to touch them again. Don't be afraid to touch them. Well, Jim, I can't physically touch them. You can touch them with an email, with a fax, with a phone call. We're going to talk about the phone call being, it's every, you know, social distancing is probably one of the worst phrases ever created. Because that's that adjective thing on distancing. Ladies and gentlemen, distancing is absolutely diametrically opposed to business. When you distance yourself from your customers and your clients, you're not ready to do business right? You can't do business. I wrote a blog when I got really angry in March, social distancing doesn't mean business distancing. It's one of my best read blogs. I encourage you to read it if I didn't send it to you already. Well, Jim, what about these social media channels? I know there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them that don't mean anything and you should forget about them. TikTok, here's some that are gone. Clout, TwitTik, they're all gone. And so if you look at the regular social media channels on the right, some of those are already gone. Google Plus is gone. Tumblr is gone. And what makes you think? Well, Jim, you're going to say this. Nobody's going to believe you if you said this. People have tried to tell me not to say this. Maybe Facebook will be gone someday because people will realize how much money Facebook is making off of your data. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to control the data. Facebook and Twitter. I love Twitter. LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. These are great channels to network. But your website is the key channel that you want to do. This is not personal. It's business. But when they shut down the economy, it becomes very personal because what they're doing is they're taking away your livelihood. Don't let them do that. Don't let them do it. We had Governor Pritzker here in Illinois said, I'd rather choose life over a livelihood because you can't have a livelihood without life. Ladies and gentlemen, what kind of life will you have without a livelihood? What, I, just ask yourself that. So that's, that's, we're done with that, right? We gotta go out and try to do things. And this presentation is about business, right? So let's talk about it. Nothing has changed because of the virus, there's senders, there's receivers, right? And receivers become senders, there's interaction going on. The secret to social media for business is to listen to these channels. Don't always talk, you're gonna talk, but you, social media channels more than anything else are a listening tool. They're a listening tool, right? So you should hop on these channels and listen, especially when you're targeting as we're gonna show you in a minute. Social media platforms should be subordinate to your website. Your website, as I told you, is your most important, it's absolutely essential, most important social media channel you have. Everything should lead to your website because then Facebook can't shut you down. Twitter can't shut you down. No one can shut you down except yourself. So you listen, you decide, and then you act, right? Marcus Aurelius, a great philosopher, a lot smarter than me, he said, ask yourself at every moment, is this necessary? Is what you're doing necessary? And, I, you know, if I see another, you know, surgeon dancing, right, with his mask on, okay, how many of those you got to see? I know he's, he's a great healthcare worker. I adore him. He's saving lives. Great. Great. But what is that going to do for my business? Sports. I need sports. The sports have stopped. What has sports ever done for your business, right? What has it done for your business? So you ask yourself what you're doing. Is it necessary? But to eliminate unnecessary assumptions, assumptions, we have to eliminate unnecessary actions that follow the assumptions. So the question, ladies and gentlemen, are what are some of the unnecessary assumptions you're making to waste your time? How often, like I said, do you have to read wash your hair, right? So what are the assumptions? Jim Mattis, the former Secretary of Defense, a great Marine, read his book if you get a chance, Call Sign Chaos. Think about this quote, digital technologies falsely encourage 
remote staffs to believe they possess a God's eye view of combat. Digital technologies do not dissipate confusion. The fog of war actually thickens when misinformation is instantly applied. If you change the word in here to, about the virus, and he's talking about the virus instead of combat, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. It's the misinformation that amplifies the fact that saying to you, well, business, everything is on halt. Everything is, I know it's difficult. Holy, we just got fired by our longest client yesterday, not fired. They took away our last project. <laughs> How do you think that made me feel, right? The guy's been with us, the company has been with us since 1993, 93, right? And they get the call yesterday and say, well, we're going in a different direction. We're pulling it in-house to a different third-party vendor. We were, we were handling their website. Well, you know what? Okay, great. It's business, right? I could blame the virus. I could blame a lot of things. But the virus is a convenient excuse to pull business from you. Don't let them do it. Because what I did the next, the next moment, I'm going after the competitor. I'm not waiting around. I'm not waiting around. The problem before the virus was everyone thinks they're a designer or an architect or whatever. You're, you know, if you're, you're Wounded Warriors, you're a great, you know, organization. Everybody thought that you're good. And then the internet, everybody thinks they're good. Look at, you know, Fund Me, Fund Me pages. Every Fund Me pages competes with Wounded Warriors. It does. So everybody thinks they are these things because of the internet. And that was pre-virus. But then the virus hit and shut everything down. So the real problem is, if everyone is sheltering in place, how the heck do we overcome social distancing and start doing business again? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the problem, right? We all knew it takes six to eight touches before the virus to turn a real sales lead into a sales lead. You have to touch a person six to eight times. I had someone we were prospecting after KBiz, a manufacturer. I've got a meeting set up for tomorrow. The, the manufacturer, the person replied to me, you know, from a January 21st email, right? Since January 21st, I sent this person four emails, including a comprehensive KBiz report on social media, right? But they replied to the January 21st email. So the first question I'm going to ask tomorrow is, did you read the other three emails or four emails I sent you? You see, never give up. Never give up. It's changed the way we do this thing forever, but, and people are afraid. They're afraid, oh, I, it's, I'm gonna waste my time, so I'll just sit here. Don't do it. This is an email I got on March 26th. I just read it over the weekend, because I've been buried, right? The, San Diego checking in. I saw you at the KBiz show and afterwards uh, about, and I talked to you, she talked to me for changing careers. I'm not gonna read everything in here. She spoke to a friend of hers, she, she shadow marketed that, the person hired her, and she just sold. Look at the line in the middle right here. I sold, in my first month, I sold five kitchens. And at the end, she says, thank you for speaking to me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one. I can give you example after example after example. This positive attitude, read her last paragraph. The positive attitude she exudes is what you really need. You need to do have that positive attitude. How the heck do you sell five kitchens in an environment like this? You know how you do it? You don't take no for an answer. You keep plugging away. You keep moving forward. You overcome fear. And you start touching virtually. You help people. You help your clients. You help your customers overcome their fear. Everybody's afraid. You can't be afraid. The phone is your greatest weapon. And, me, and social media assets. Channels are, are listening tools, your real advantages, your website. I'm gonna go over some things right now that'll, that'll help you. Overcoming fear, number one. You gotta be open to dialogue, which means you gotta change the conversation. Don't talk about the virus, right? Before COVID-19, 70% of people, this is an absolute fact. I used to, this was in my course. 70% of people were getting their information from Google searches before they would talk to you about what you do. They would do research on you. Before they called a rep, before they called a magazine, before they did anything, they would be researching on Google. How high do you think that is today? 
what do you think it will be tomorrow and how do you fit in? You know how you fit in? If you're not on page one in a Google search, you're not, you're not there. You're not there. And because of the virus, that searching with Google as, as that channel, I hate Google and I love Google. I love Google because you can find, find me. I hate Google because Google wants you to pay them to find you. Don't do it. But you have to do your website and you have to SEO it like never before. In your audiences, you're right, there's many influences on your product or your service. If you're giving to a charity, if you're selling architectural services, design services, there's many people who make that decision, whether you're targeting a hospital, which is what we're talking about, or whether you're targeting a residence, right? It's not just one person anymore that makes the decision, right? So this is emphasized during lockdowns. When there's locking down going on, which is what we're in now, we're in a lockdown. It's like we're in prison, for heaven's sake. People are talking. They're passing each other's notes. They're talking more. Listen to those conversations. They give you clues on what you have to be talking about. Yeah, it's more convenient. Let's just wait it out. and We'll just do things the way it's going to happen. I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. It ain't going back the way it was. This thing has changed it. It's brought, a, it's brought to the surface the realization, the realization of how much your livelihood depends on what you do. There's people, I know editors, they're writing, you know, they get a chance to spend time with their family. One of our clients said this is the perfect job for him because he can work at home now. Get, you know, they get up at midnight, they can work a little bit and go back to sleep. They can be whatever. Isn't that nice? But the world isn't like that. The world isn't like that. You got to touch people and the virus will end. It's not going to be the same. What's it going to be like? You have to be figuring that out. Here's what you do to overcome fear. Talk to your customers by phone. What are you doing? How's, how's that faucet that I installed before the virus working out? What are you planning on doing, right? People in their homes, forget the hospital for a moment. We're going to go into that. People in their homes are doing one thing now, right? What are they doing? They're spending time with each other. You, you saw how domestic violence is rising? I'm kidding. I'm not. Eventually, when this thing ends, they're going to say, you know what? It's time for new appliances. You know what? It's time for a new kitchen. You know what? That's how that person is selling their five kitchens. And that was in March, right? Early April. They're already getting tired of looking at the same thing. Because remember, when you're locked down and you're looking at the same thing, you get tired of what you're looking at, right? Send them something in the mail. The mail is virus-free, right? I got the, you know, Lou is our mail delivery guy. He loves us. We love him. He walks in with a mask. You can't see his smiling face, for heaven's sake. But prospects do the same thing. We have someone in the audience today. I talked to her last night. Hello, Lynn. She said, I sent my clients cookies so that when I call them on the phone, they can give the kids the cookies and we can have a nice conference call. She got three calls back. Think about what she's doing. She's thinking like a salesperson. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all salesperson in this environment. All of us. You have to keep moving. Blaise Pascal said absolute rest is death. You know what that, right? Absolute rest is death. Don't stop. Change that conversation. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. A son used a bucket truck to visit his mother on the third floor of her assisted living home. You know, some of the comments on this post were, oh, well, he's just the privileged class. Who, who can afford the dumb truck, right, Dad? What if I told you that, that that's the guy's business and he doesn't have a lot of business yet, so he used it to visit his mom? Isn't that, tell me this is not creative thinking, ladies and gentlemen. That doesn't mean you should get a dumb truck to visit your clients in their home. That would scare them, right? But think creatively. I got some more examples for you later. Overcoming fear. Understanding the transition of a 30 second spot, bullet points to digital. You know, before COVID, it used to be just give me the bullet point. Just give me the short, short story, right? Nobody will have time to read. Suddenly everybody had time to read. I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. Before COVID-19, Google read everything. How the heck do you think you get great SEO? How do you do that? You know how you do that. You do that by having great content. Because Google, ladies and gentlemen, I am not lying. Google reads everything. Google conversation from hell. Don't do it now. Do it after the webinar. 
I am number one. I've been number one for five years. Conversation from hell. Google put me there. Publishers, publishers, smart people have come. I've showed them what that was before the virus. And they said, how much do you pay Google for that? I go, I can't tell you. It's a lot of money. I don't pay them a dime. It's SEO. Google reads everything. People have more time than ever before now to read. Jim, that report of 32 pages is way too long. Nobody will read it. Pre, Pre-COVID? Well, you know what? I didn't care anyway, because if you didn't read it, I didn't want you as a client. Post-COVID? You definitely, they will read it, but my attitude is the same. If you read it, you will hire us. If you don't, at least I'm in the running and you read it. Your proposals, the way you pitch your business, through the internet, through online, through your website, lasts forever. Uh, what should you do? Start writing blogs on your website. It, you know, there's lots of ways to do websites. We can help you. WordPress is great. It is the greatest. Blog like crazy. Publish articles on media outlets. There's one in the bottom right-hand corner I did right before the virus hit in January, right? The end of January. It got a lot. You know, it got some feedback, right? Assume the leadership position. You know, there's lots of designers, there's lots of architects, there's lots of, you know, charities, there's lots of manufacturers out there. Be the act big, think big, be big. Ed Dean taught me that. Act big, think big, be big. You have to keep moving. You have to keep moving. Negative can be a positive too. It's called listening. We had a programmer come running into my office once pre COVID. Say, there's a guy on the phone say, why, why, you know, why did, why did he get this email? He wants to know. I, I called him back and I said, hey, Fred, you're on a list for our client and that's why you got the email and you, you're identified as the project leader for Kroger, Kroger stores, lots of stores. Kroger stores still open during the virus, right? Food. Don't ask me about toilet paper. So I talked to Fred. He said, you know, Jim, he says, I just wanted to thank you because I've been getting all these emails. He's been getting inundated because his name is on the list as the project manager for this project of one of the Kroger stores going up. And I had a conversation with him. It lasted three or four minutes. We became, you know, very cordial. And he says, oh, by the way, he's ending the phone call. Oh, by the way, Jim, I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy. It's really Harry so-and-so that's the guy, not me. I just wanted to let you know that and thank you for answering my question. He gave me the guy. How do you do that? That's called a relationship. I didn't touch him. I didn't drive my pickup truck, uh, you know, with my lift truck. I didn't do any of that. I talked to him on the phone. These things are still, still, they're still out there and you should do these things. Listening, become a counter talker. You know, you hear a lot about our, our president. He's a counterpuncher, right? But it doesn't matter what you think of the guy. We watch the guy. He's an interesting guy, but he's a counterpuncher. Be a counter talker. Don't talk all the time. I know I'm doing this now because I'm trying to, you know, get you going. What do you do? Listen to webinars. Then share your findings. Call somebody up and say, this is what I just heard. What do you think? Not just about the virus. About, you know, somebody's thinking of banning tile in Michigan. Do you, do you believe this? The governor of Michigan is thinking of banning tile and paint. Are you kidding me? I can't wait for when the people say, you know, enough is enough. They don't have that right to do that. That's your livelihood they're farting around with. Stop the madness. React to the webinars. Publish your notes on the webinar. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I am not getting political. When I talk about governors or the federal government, I'm not getting political. They're taking away our livelihood. They, they, they're actually stepping in and making rules to take away the chances to, for you to make your livelihood. That is simply wrong. Because they don't work. You know that, right? They're elected officials. Who elected us? Our clients. Our clients do every day. Interact with these webinars and keep moving forward. Know your brand identity. Ladies and gentlemen, of all the people in the audience today, there's no one like you. There's no one like you, right? You are your brand. So you can't be everything to everyone. You can't be a COVID-19 expert <laughs> and an expert in, in architecture. Just be true to who you are. Clients, we've seen it repeatedly get hammered when they leave their core competency. 
That's why I know it's bad. I know there's a virus. Forget about it. Keep your brand in front of people. Talk about what you know. We have knowledge and service as our two pillars. We've had knowledge. And, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, a personal note, next week, Thursday, is 30 years in business. 30 years. I can't imagine that. I, when I started the business, right, I got fired for the third time. I can't imagine I'd be here 30 years later talking about a virus trying to kill me. <laughs> but it's trying to kill me. It's trying to kill you. Let's fight it. Didn't we fight it together? Anyway, do some research. Make some phone calls. Do a 10 study. Do use Survey Monkey. Don't bemoan our faith. Find out what people really need. What do they need? And let's give it to them. But Tom Fitzpatrick was a great sales guy. He taught me a lot. <clears throat> He's retired now in Tampa. Pardon me. So I'm talking to him one day, and they live in a in a community, and they're closed off like everyone else. They're sheltering in place. And he's telling he starts telling me a story about how they got their cocktails in the evening, and got into their golf cart, and drove, and they had a little meeting for an hour, and they stayed six feet away from each other, of course. And then they had they had someone come in and talk about kitchen renovation. <laughs> Stood in the middle of the circle and talked to talk to the people who lived in the community about renovating their kitchen after the virus happened. And I said, whose idea was that? He goes, well, I don't want to take full credit, but it was mine. <laughs> this is amazing. He's an amazing guy, right? He's an amazing guy. You have to think out of the box. And the way you take away fear is through practice. You have to practice. So pick your targets. Fail, fail fast, but keep going. You're, there's no one who has the answers. No one. Ready, aim, fire, forget that. Ready, fire, aim, fire again. Keep firing. Get people to pull that trigger. Don't give up. I'm going to give you an example now. The example is the hospital, okay, before I go into the, some strategy. This, we're going to go through this very quickly. I see some hands are up. I'll get to you in a minute. This hospital, if you look on the bottom, they're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube, okay? This is what they look like pre-COVID. This is what they look like post-COVID, right? Notice, notice what they look like. Notice the little person on the right. Hi, I'm Eleanor. Do you want to chat about COVID virus? You can't get through here, right? This is what their website looks like. And you're thinking if you're an architect, designer, or whatever, how the hell do... How the heck do you penetrate this and target this company? Whereas before, it would be easier. I can find out through social media channels by listening what they're working on, the projects they're working on. Now, if you go to their Facebook page, effective Sunday, March 15th, they don't even allow people to see the patients. They've stopped people from seeing patients. How the heck are you going to get into there with your pitch on what to do yeah, that you want to help them. That, and I'm. this is just a hospital, and I picked it before, and I kept it this time because of how difficult this is, right? And if you look at this, on the, some of the posts, and you start reading them, you will formulate a plan to do it. I'm going to show you how to do that, if this were your target. But you have to check all their social media channels. And ladies and gentlemen, here's the secret. If you're a hospital, you ain't talking about anything except COVID-19. And guess what? Guess what? If you look at the statistics now, they have too many beds. They've, uh, they've overbuilt. What are they going to do with all that? Well, I know at least 50 designers in my audience get, can help them understand what they should do with this virus, with the overbuilding of the virus. Because guess what? I'm not talking about the Javits Center where they, you know, they've got 2,900 beds now just sitting there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about every hospital in the United States who had to barrel down because of this virus, because of the panic, and everybody's scared, and they went way to the extreme, and they overbuilt now. What are you going to do with that? Well, what about preparing for the next one? What should you do with that? What should a designer or an architect look at when he's looking at some of the problems that these people are going to face? They're going to face that. In YouTube, if you look at their YouTube channel, what do you think that first video is about? It's called the virus. They invented this little caricature with a thermometer in her mouth or his mouth or whatever, right? And they're using it everywhere. That's the one good thing about the hospital. They use it with consistency. In LinkedIn, you can go to LinkedIn and find people in the hospital you should target, Instagram, 
Pinterest. Don't ask me why a hospital is on Instagram. If you Google it, you can't Google enough. And if you Google Edward Elmer's Hospital and Architecture, you can not only see the architecture or firm that does it, but you see they had a $50 million building plan going on. Here's a question. Is it still going on or has it been postponed or canceled or paused for COVID-19? We do a lot of research. I just looked at research, right, for what we were doing for, for a target market in Illinois. And there's only 6% of projects that have canceled. There's only 6% of projects that have canceled. 6%, that's nothing, right? So if people are going online more, 64% say, I'm gonna, these are the percentage increases that they're gonna be using those channels, right? And remember what I told you, you wanna listen before you talk, you have to become the influencer. I'm gonna say this again. You, every one of you in the audience now are the influencer. You know what an influencer is, right? That's the latest marketing you know, uh, buzzword. Everybody wants to buy influencers now. They don't wanna buy media outlets, they wanna buy influencers. Influencers are people who have a following of maybe a million people, 500,000 people, so they become an influencer. Guess what? Here's the dirty little secret. You have to become the influencer. You have to gather people, and the people you gather around you are your clients. Your client, you want to influence your clients in a positive way, in a positive way. I'm going to take a break now and ask some and answer some questions. Let me see here. All right, Anne Marie, there you are. Let's see what your question is. It's snowing here too. <laughs> yes, it is. Isn't it wonderful? What the heck? Audio, audio, Jeff. Your audio question is that you can dial in on the phone number that you got in the invitation, um, and uh, that should do it. No sound after testing my end. Michael, I hope you're hearing me now. Make sure you can hear me now. Can't hear anything. Congratulations on 30 years. Thank you very much. This is a waste of time. Okay, Greg, thanks for that comment. See you later, buddy. In fact, should I, should I cancel you out? Oh, you already left. Goodbye. That's okay. You see, so you can't. Ladies and gentlemen, can I answer that last question? I learned very early in, in my life, you can't please everybody. You can't. When I got married, I had only enough money to have 75 people, right? So the 75 people, I, I lost a lot of friends because I only had money for 75 people. Many more people wanted to come, but I couldn't have them. At that point, I learned, I learned everything that basically uh, you can't please everybody. So I no longer try to, to, to do that. Greg, nice seeing you, buddy. Okay, let's go now. Let's see what Greg's missed, right? We're gonna, we're gonna put those questions away for a minute. Okay. Social media guidelines. Pitching for new business and seven things to ask when you, ask when you lose a pitch, right? Pre-COVID, we used to learn how to pitch business. And then when we lost business, we want to ask why we lost. Well, everybody's losing. That, that seven things to ask post that I have is one of, it, it's been viewed over 4,000 times since I posted it a couple of years ago. Many of them more recently because nobody's pitching anymore. So there's nothing to lose. You need a plan. It's great to get excited about a new channel, right? But you need a plan. Don't be afraid to look at what other people are doing and ask yourself, how can I repurpose what they are doing and make it work for my company? Can we do that? Can we do that? Here's what you do. The greatest guy I know on planning and strategy is Alexander the Great. And his strategy was very simple. Anticipate, react, and adapt. Anticipate what's going to happen. React to what happens and then adapt what you just did to conditions that change because there is no plan that anyone has ever written. You can ask any combat general, right? You can ask anybody, any teacher. I used to be a teacher. I'd write a lesson plan. My first day of teaching, I was taught, you know, to write lesson plans in college. I wrote the best lesson plans you can write. I wrote a lesson plan for my first day of school and I absolutely threw it out the window within two minutes. Why? Because the children did not, I was teaching sophomores in high school, they didn't read the plan. They didn't care about the plan, nor did they want to be enforced by the plan. So the best plan, and you can ask any combat warrior, you write a plan, you try to stick to it, but then battle conditions change. 
they change the plan. So you have to adapt. What should you do with this virus thing going on? What do you do? Write down your strategy. I will call my prospects. I will call my customers. I will make 10 phone calls today. Write it down. I'm going to work on my SEO on my website. I'm going to start a blog on my website. All the things we were talking about are become part of your strategy. What's the ultimate strategy? When this virus ends, to come out on top. Come out on top, right? Today is the age of disruption, right? Target your desired audience. What does that mean? Well, who is your desired audience? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's your customer. Your customer file. Go back to your customer file. When's the last time you talked to them? When's the last time you touched them? Reach out to them. And what should you do? Read what they're saying on their posts. They all have social media channels. What are they talking about besides hand washing? Engage them. Call them. Mail them something. Leadership in today's world is a blog I did. Heaven's sake, let's do that. Can we do that? Can you become a leader rather than a follower? Unlike what Greg thinks, you know, there's nothing here. This is what's here. If he's, if he's left the building, then maybe he has the answer. You should have stayed and offered us some advice. What kind of person is that that leaves and doesn't share? Huh? <laughs> Devote proper time and resources. Commit proper time and resources. And if you can't do it, you know, before the virus, I would show this slide and everybody would throw up their hands and say, I have no time. It's all you have now after the virus hit. That's all you have now is time. You can't use that excuse anymore. I don't have time. I don't have time. Sleep even less. Exercise. Don't hire your cousins to help you. Hire professionals. Join things virtually. B2B never sleeps is a blog I did. Very important on what people did before the virus and what they're doing now. And for heaven's sake, learn WordPress. If your website is easy to use and it's in, in WordPress, you're, you're steps ahead of the game. If it's not in WordPress, get it in WordPress because WordPress gives you control, not the vendor control. Build relationships. It's about building relationships, virtual relationships. Before, you know, social media was like a cocktail party, right? That makes sense. You're at a cocktail party, you're talking. But even in a cocktail party, you never want everybody to say, would you like to buy my services? You don't do that. And you don't do that now. You don't lead with your service. You talk about your knowledge. This is a new world we're in. I can't see the smile underneath your mask. They can't see. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm standing up. I'm gesturing. I'm laughing. I'm having fun. But I have a mask on, right? No. My mask is the Internet. I didn't, I didn't make it live. I didn't Skype. Call your manufacturers. What are they doing? Oh, they're sheltering in place too, Jim. Really? But they're still sheltering? Call them up. Do a mailing saying, you know, I'm going to do a mailing. I can do a mailing. They haven't shut down the post office. And then do another mailing. And educate people. Ladies and gentlemen, you learn by educating people. My, my buddy Don Tickle said, you never learn anything by talking. Those were the days, weren't they, when we socialized, right? But if you can't do that now, socialize on the internet and listen to people. Conference call. Do a Zoom or go to meetings. Give knowledge. Read what's love got to do with a B2B brand. That's what this course is based on. And do it carefully. I always use this. This is still relevant. This is taking the time to act. There's not a lot of this going on nowadays because all they're talking about is the virus. This, this is a J.C. Penny thing that happened where the teapot looked like Hitler and some jerk from the Telegraph posted it. And so everybody started talking about it and it went viral. But J.C. Penny acted very carefully and answered all the tweets. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? They sold out of teapots. They sold all their teapots. Everybody wanted one. So be sensitive. I'm not saying to ignore hand washing. I'm not saying blah, 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 blah. I'm saying be sensitive to what's going on. And, and use it to your advantage by redoing your website, getting ready for the virus to end, and taking charge. Don't be a victim. Don't. This is very powerful now. People are spending their time on it like crazy. We do the YAY, Young Entrepreneurs Association. Every April or end of March, they would bring over their young students to our offices. Well, that's not here anymore. 
So I just sent it to the executive director, right? I just sent the executive a note. Do you want to have a virtual meeting with the students? Because these are people who work their butts off all year trying to write a business plan, right? They're trying to, these are the future entrepreneurs of America, right? And now all of a sudden they're shut out from coming to visit Interlock. So I, I wrote them, I emailed, said, let's do it virtually. Put them online and we'll talk to them. Finally, if you're on the channels, start using them. Don't be afraid of failing. This is a difficult, difficult time, right? Do you have questions? Let's look at questions again, because this is our time is short. I don't want to waste your time. Okay, let's see. How do you feel about virtual shows? Great question, Doug. Thank you for the question. Virtual shows are the future, right? They tried this before COVID, way years before, when trade shows were, you know, trying to, they were losing business. So somebody came up with the idea of a virtual trade show, right? It didn't work. It failed miserably. Well, guess what? I was just online with one of the security people, ironically, Doug. I was just online with one of the security who, because of uh, the trade show they were going to uh, in the West, they they shut that down and they keep postponing it. So they bought they brought their booth to you. I signed on. It was a great presentation. I learned about security cameras. Right? You you have to take it to them now. Trade shows are gone. Right? Nobody's going to go to trade shows like they used to because everybody would be afraid. It'll it'll change two or three years. Do you have two or three years to wait? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. So if you don't have two or three years to wait. Take the show to them. Do a show about your own company to them. Hope that answers your question. Let's say I'm a small business firm without, this is from, oh, Jim, nice to see you, Jim, my buddy, Jim, Lucy. Let's say I'm a smaller firm without a dedicated marketing person and small, maybe non-existent budget to build social media program from an outside vendor. How much time will I need to dedicate to building my own daily, weekly basis? That's a great question. So the, Jim's question is, He's a smaller firm, no marketing person, no budget. How long will it take? It's going to take from now until the end of the world. No, I'm serious. It takes time. But to get on these channels right now, to build your website right now from scratch, if you, if you have WordPress, you can build a website, a functional website, right, in a couple of days. I'm, I'm not kidding you. We have a template. We use a template for when people would get whacked at a company. We've had this template for years. When a person that one of our clients got whacked and he was a friend, we offered him the template to hang up his shingle temporarily while he was looking for another job or wanted to try his own business. Ladies and gentlemen, that template was created 10 years ago. It still works. It's up. We can get people up and running in a matter of minutes, right? Then he just changes the copy to go. But that's not the point, and I don't think that's what Jim's asking. How long would it take someone to do it? It would take you, because let's face it, Jim, people have a lot of time on their hands right now, right? This is the time to strike. This is the time to look. So you started by looking what other people are doing and then figure out what you want to do with your business. We'd be happy to talk to you offline about that if you have anybody in mind like that. I would love virtual shows, can't be everywhere. Uh, at all times, and this would be very helpful. There, Doug, there's your answer from Anne Marie. Anne Marie, thank you so much. I would love virtual shows. You can't be everywhere. Isn't that the truth? You can't be everywhere, can you? You can't be everywhere. Online, you can be everywhere. Side note, you know, every, you know, religion is, you know, interesting too. If you study religions, I was a theology minor, philosophy minor, English major. And these days, of course, they've been, you can't go to church, right? So I did an online service this weekend, first time, and I had a discussion with, with he's a friend of mine, he's a, he's a military chaplain, good buddy, known him for many years. And he, his cry was basically, he feels really bad that he's talking to an empty church. And I had to correct him. I had to correct him. I said, you really, <laughs> you're not talking to an empty church. You're talking to millions of people, potentially, who can't fit in your church. He says, yeah, but you got to understand, I'm a physical, you know, the, the sacrament is physical, right? I got it. What isn't physical? But you, if you can't be physical, ladies and gentlemen, the next best thing, in fact, a better thing is often what Anne-Marie just said, virtual. 
Just like now, this is virtual. If I turned on my camera, you'd see I'm sweating buckets presenting here, right? I'm sweating buckets. Do I have any other questions? Okay, I don't think so. I don't see any other questions. Let's see one more time. Okay. Well, a word from our sponsor. I know we're a little bit over. Stick with me. We're a little under. KB Resource, kb-resource.com, is a media outlet started last year. This is a this is the future of media outlets, ladies and gentlemen. These people will publish anything. <laughs> if you have a case history, if you have a blog, send it to the editor at kbresource.com. Send it to the editor at kbresource.com. They'll look it over, and chances are you're going to be on there. And the why I suggest this to you is because in the world of SEO, you can't be in enough places. You want to be linking and linked to. And this media outlet will actually link back to your website where you post your content. It's the few, you should take a look at it. Their premise is very different from a typical media outlet that you find out there. Most media outlets want to sell you digital ads, blah, blah, blah. Take a look at what they're doing. There's no charge for this. They'll, they'll, they're, all they're interested in is generating eyeballs and content for you. Very interesting. And thank you, KB Resource, for sponsoring us. Our other sponsor is Accountability Information Management. They position themselves as a unique research company, and they do all sorts of construction market studies. This is this is not a media outlet. This is a company, all right? But I think they're thinking about becoming a media outlet in this, you know, post-virus world. If you go to a-i-m.com, you can really look at some of their research, their reports. Most all of this is just free for the taking. You'll find something in there on door hardware. You'll find something in there on paint. They study what we do as designers and architects and in our world. They also make very, they do power tools. They'll do power tools. And if you're interested in, in having any topic in construction or non-construction studied, Send an email to inquiries at aim.com, inquiries at a, a hyphen i f and m dot com. They'll look it over and they'll certainly be in touch with you. And I thank accountability for sponsoring this. On behalf of everyone here at Interline, seriously, on behalf of everyone, everyone at Interline, I want to thank you. This is a very difficult time. I hope I gave you something to think about. Strategy, you know. Take the initiative, don't stop moving. This is the time to create your website, redo your website, and start talking to your customers. Those are the takeaways. Don't let this virus hamper your business. We're not letting it hamper us. We're not letting it hamper us. I know it's difficult. Of course it is. You know, if you have a small company, 15 employees, how the heck you pay them, right? Figure out a way. The government is giving you money these days, right? Figure that out, try that, try everything don't lose your livelihood. And if I can help in any way, in any way, please call me. There's my phone number. There's my email. That's my Twitter handle, right? Go to innerlinegroup.com, evaluate, fill that out. I'll give you all of my eight books on surviving, which, which I actually wrote many years ago, right? Survival tips. Isn't that interesting? I'm online in person at the continuingarchitect.com. If you go to continuingarchitect.com, I have six or five or six of my courses videotaped so you can see me in person. Don't throw. And by the way, I read comments. I read everything. I'm like Google. I think I'm going to have to change my next course to, to a COVID virus edition as well, especially if the AIA, IDCC, and the NKB approve it so, so generously. Thank you so much for coming. If you have any more questions, let me know. Uh, email me. I'll look at the questions again. I did get uh, your energy always gets me pumped. Thank you. <laughs> well, it gets me pumped too. They offered me water, but I just take, took my coffee. <laughs> I just took my coffee. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Let's sell something.